Ideas Worth Spreading. That's the tagline for a series of conferences broadcast on the Internet. They're called TED Conferences, and they aim to give the wider public access to inspiring thinkers. Today, TED is holding one of those conferences in Toronto. Frank Russo is one of those inspiring thinkers. He's a psychology professor at Ryerson University, and his area of expertise has to do with finding ways to help deaf people experience music. We reach Professor Russo in Toronto. Professor Russo, what did you develop to help deaf people experience music? So uh, in, in collaboration with my Ryerson colleagues, we've developed something that we've called the Moda Chair. Essentially, it's a sensory substitution technology, and that basically just means taking information from one sensory system and making it accessible to another system. In this case, we're looking at taking sound and presenting it as vibration. Primarily, uh, the focus has become for the purpose of music. How does the chair work? Essentially, uh, uh, sound is is recorded, um, or it, it, it's either recorded uh, or it's taken in live. Uh, the sound is then filtered, uh, so very much the same way that your equalizer will filter the sound. So you're probably familiar with the different bands on your equalizer, and you know sometimes the bands to the left are a little more energetic than the bands to your right. That's all a bank of filters that is taking the sound and uh, capturing energy that exists in different frequency bands. We're doing the exact same thing. We can do that with a computer. We can do that with um, a circuitry. Uh, we then amplify the output from each one of those bands. And rather than delivering it through a conventional speaker, we deliver it through a voice coil. So a voice coil is a vibrational device, but it's incredibly sensitive to uh, nuances in amplitude and frequency. So it's, it, it's really ideal for capturing uh, changes in pitch that you find in music. By virtue of being a chair, is it, do the vibrations, where do they come into? Where, where does the body contact those vibrations within the chair? Um, these voice coils that I mentioned are embedded in the chair. Uh, what seems to work really well is, is sort of a sling. Uh, and it, it's almost like the kind of... Um, camping chair uh, form where your body just kind of sinks into it. So when you sink into the chair, you can get these voice coils right up against your body and, uh, and getting them close to your body is really important when you're trying to perceive particularly those higher frequencies. If they're far away from the body, they're, they're just not, you're not going to feel them. Do you feel the frequencies, the sound frequencies in different parts of the body? Right, right. So that's critical. Um, so we present the, the lower frequencies and the higher frequencies to different parts of the body. Um, we do this because of this problem called perceptual masking. Um, whenever you present two vibrations to the same part of the body, the lower frequency vibration dominates the higher frequency vibration. Um, so it's, it, it renders a lot of the music signal useless. But if you separate these bands out and you present them to different parts of the back, so for example, put the higher frequencies, the piccolos, the, the higher voices at the upper part of the back, and you put uh, the cellos, the lower voices, on the bottom part of your back, then you can feel these, these different sources of sound as independent sources of vibration, and you, you get around that problem of perceptual masking. You've sent us uh, an example of this kind of music, this vibe track. Can you just uh, tell us what it is we're going to hear? The composer is Paul Swoger Rustin, and he's one of the early adopters, if you will. He's become excited about composing where vibration is the primary modality. What Paul's doing here is he's using uh, frequencies that are within the range of vibrotactile sensitivity. He is not really worried about harmony. He's not really worried about um, conventional melodic structures. He's really trying to pull out the sensory experience. And you can, I think you can get a sense of that by those low, really shaking kind of sounds when we, you know, we're hearing them now through radio. Well, then let's hear them. This is Wabash Cannon Rag. I 
have high quality headphones on, so that's an incredible experience from from my perspective. If you put that through a chair, through this chair, how would th- th- this would be a very sensual, very sensuous experience for a deaf person then? And for a hearing person, yeah, it it, it envelops the body, um, and you, you notice the use of of uh, vibrato and tremolo, so the deviations, the micro deviations in pitch and intensity, uh, those kinds of changes tend to appear harsh for uh, when we think about music as sound. But in vibration, they become very interesting and something uh, provocative. So, I mean, that's just one way in which composing for vibration might lead to a different kind of sound than composing for hearing. You gave this, you presented this at a TED Talk today. Right. Uh, how was it received? Oh, it was great. It, it, it just the audiences at these talks are full of energy and ready to embrace new ideas. Well, it is a wonderful idea, and it was quite an experience to listen to. Professor Russo, thank you. Thank you, Carol.